This is a Tracking the Tropics update with a certified most accurate weather team at First Coast News. Good afternoon, everyone. Have you been outside? Have you felt the, the autumnal air? Now, I'm bringing that up, number one, because I do think it feels great. But there's also, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a bit. But the autumnal air, in many ways, is our friend. But let me get to the specifics. A lot of clouds, so kind of gusty out there. But it's not like Milton is hanging around. It is not. Milton is racing away. In fact, notice the Hurricane Center calling it post-tropical. And all that means is it has transitioned to where it's getting more of its energy from the upper levels uh, but probably the, mo the biggest you care about there. Notice that it's at 77.5 west. What's that matter? Well, our coastline is at about 81.5 west. So that means Milton is now 240 miles out over the open Atlantic and will continue to race away from us. And thus, our weather conditions will continue to uh, improve in quite a dramatic way. We're going to talk about the coastal situation because that's where the, the winds are gustiest. If you remember, through the approach of Milton, we were giving you forecasts of what the winds were going to be like over land, but then also over the water because over land, because it's autumn, we had those cooler north winds created an inversion, and that means the potential for the winds was not as great because those higher level winds can't make it to the surface with an inversion. On the other hand, over the wider sections of the St. John's, out around the beaches over that warm water, the inversion wasn't there, and so the winds were, high, were higher. So that's one of the reasons why even this afternoon, over the river, out around the beaches, we're still getting some gusts of 40. But I really want to focus on the tides because although the rain has ended and there's not any new additional water rushing in, there's a lot of water in the St. John's uh, Basin. It's in the estuaries. It's throughout all the intracoastal, basically running at about two to four. But because of you folks in extreme southern St. John's County and extreme southern Putnam County, we have to say five feet for you. Notice we've already passed the most recent high tide at the beach. So for anybody out toward the islands, and this includes St. Augustine, you've already had your high tide, and now that water will begin to drain. All along the St. John's River, especially in Duval and Northern Clay, we're right about at high tide. So the water is right about as, as high as it's going to get. Uh, it is backing up through drains into roads around the region. Again, that's not because of the rain, that's because of the storm surge. But I do want to emphasize, we don't expect it to be more than a street flood event. Still something you want to watch. Uh, the police are out there and they're putting cones uh, because these are areas that are well predicted. We know where that happens. Uh, but just want to let you know that this is not going to be in Irma. The waters will not rise up into businesses and homes, at least not for 99% of us. Okay, uh, here's another look just at the tides. I do want to emphasize, of course, we're going to give you the tides way down south in Palatka and Wallaka, but your tidal difference uh, and you folks know this down there, is only a few inches. So you're not going to have a big difference between high and, and low. On the other hand, at the Main Street Bridge, for those of us in Duval, Northern St. John's, there's about a two foot difference. And that can, that can be a big difference as far as whether or not it's just in the road or coming through your home or homes or businesses. Uh, we have about a two foot difference in Northern Clay and St. John's. And then out on the, uh, out on the islands, out at the beaches, uh, there's about a five and a half foot difference. But for most beach properties nowadays, and I couldn't have said this 40 years, but nowadays a four foot surge is not going to cause a problem. So we're going to leave with this. Uh, and there goes what is left of Milton. And uh, Jeannie Blaylock is here and she's going to uh, run the show. Hello, Jeannie. Thanks. Uh, thanks for helping up and helping out. <laughs> As you know, after a while, I get tired of hearing my own voice and I would much rather have a conversation. Well, I'll tell you, I'm not going to run the show. You've been running the show. We've been following your advice and we appreciate that. I have to bring up what happened to me this morning. You guys listening right now, did it happen to you? I was sleepy, woke up after all that yesterday, went on my phone, I'm like, oh my gosh, Nadine, you gotta be kidding me, and not another one, I can't take this. So it's all over social media, and right now on our First Coast News page on web, uh, on First Coast News, and I'm stumbling now because it just was really upsetting to me this morning until I gathered my thoughts, I'm like, well, this can't really be real, so we'll ask Tim about it. But just to let you know, that's the number one question for you right now, Tim. All these people are asking about it. What about Nadine? I heard about Nadine over and over and over and over again. Is it fake? Is it fake? There are so many questions. One of our producers said he got 10 memes about this Nadine storm early this morning. So we want to make sure that we ask you about that. Bruce Kelly is asking. Abby Redeker is asking. Chris Schreiber is asking. And over and over. Is it fake? 
Please so, tell me it's so fake. yes, it is. But, but let me dive into this a little bit deeper. And, and I totally get it. I had family members who uh, this morning, um, after a couple hours of sleep, texted me and said, I'm sorry, don't bug you, but do we have to worry about this? So I get it. I, I understand everyone is looking at it and, uh, and certainly it looks real. So no, there is not a storm out there named Nadine. Now, with that said, even back last January, if you had asked our weather team, uh, come mid-October, is there a possibility a tropical cyclone might form in the Northwest Caribbean and go into the Eastern Gulf and hit Florida? Yes, it's a possibility. And we're watching for something that might possibly form in about 10 days. But, and here's the main point I wanna make, not only that it's fake, but, so that you can check it in the future. The National Hurricane Center, they're the only ones that put out the cone. And they will only put out a cone maybe, maybe two days before a storm is going to get a name. Normally no more than about 36 hours. And if you look at that, whatever we want to call it, uh, I guess you're called, we're calling it a meme or something on digital, and if you look at the dates, what it was saying, because some people asked even yesterday, uh, it was saying on Wednesday, on Thursday, and was giving a forecast starting by next Tuesday. That's your first clue, this is not right. That the National Hurricane Center is not gonna put out a cone five days before they even begin to name it. Now, um, I, think that's actually, I think that's actually the main clue, um, that, that uh, if, if you're someplace to where you don't have a weather team that you trust for some reason, just search for the National Hurricane Center and, and see what they're saying about a hurricane. I promise you, uh, if they even think there's a possibility of a, a depression, a swirl out there, they're going to be talking about it. So that's your first way to check on it. Um, the second way really is, is uh, I'm trying to do this, Jeannie, without it turning into a promo. Uh, just make sure you have some local meteorologists you can trust. Uh, and I promise, well, think about it, folks. If you've been with us for any amount of time, you know that we're going to talk about just about any swirl out there. Let's be honest. Some of you probably wish we didn't wouldn't talk about all the swirls. So there is no way through all of the time that we've been uh, talking to you all about um, Milton that we wouldn't have mentioned something about Nadine now, or, or, or whatever, whatever it's going to be called. Now, if you, if you join us tonight, we're going to go into this a little bit deeper. We even think we have found, we went to the archives of Hurricane Helene, and we even think we found the exact copy of the cone that was put out by Helene, that then whoever this person was that originally started it, uh, that they just grabbed an old cone from Helene. So hopefully uh, we'll put that to sleep. You gave a good clue. They're not going to put a cone out if it doesn't have a name, right? They're bing, 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 bing. Something might be wrong. And I know, Tim, you always apologize that people get tired of hearing your voice. That's not really true at all. So I want to compliment Camilla Sims Stamps. Listen to what she said about you. You deserve a compliment now. You've been forecasting this hour by hour by hour by hour for days now. She says, we only trust Tim regarding the details of the weather. His predictions are right on. He doesn't terrify his listeners. See, that's really important. That's we try really hard that's here not to scare everybody to death, but just to be realistic about what's going on. We're not trying to go, it's going to destroy everything. Here are the facts. And we're trying really hard to do that. So you can go right now on, on the Facebook page, First Coast News on Facebook, and tell us your comment or, or ask a question and join in with this discussion. So I wanted to ask you, how about Milton? Did he in any way help us avoid another hurricane this season? Well, uh, certainly. And, and what Jeannie's alluding to, folks, is, is Milton took out at least a couple more degrees of temperature, and just think of that as took out some potential energy from large portions of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Milton, especially because now over our waters, the winds are strong out of the north, we've already seen our ocean temperatures drop a couple degrees. They're probably going to drop a couple more, uh, and so that, that will help us as well. Doesn't mean that something can't form deep in the Caribbean where the waters are warm, but it does mean that once it gets to our waters, it's gonna have a hard time uh, getting any stronger. It's one of the reasons why as we get deeper into October and November, you don't see nearly as many category, even three hurricanes, because as they get into the Northern Gulf and the Atlantic, uh, then there's not as much energy. So it, it, at least it's gonna help. All right, some people are asking us about St. Augustine. Um, we got a notice from the St. Augustine Police Department. It was posted about three o'clock, 3.20, and it said in big, bold capital letters, 
do not come downtown. There is flooding downtown. We're still under an evacuation order. Again, do not come downtown. Uh, the bayfront is covered in water. So what's going to happen next down there? Okay, so remember, folks, what's happening in St. Augustine, it's totally tidal, meaning what was happening there peaked at about 2 to 3 o'clock because that was their high tide. No additional appreciable rain, so it's not from rainfall flooding. And so then St. Augustine will be at low tide at 8. And I'm certainly not uh, going to disagree with the police department as far as staying off the roads, but as far as the water on the roads in St. Augustine, uh, those waters, uh, they're probably actually receding now and will continue to recede at least through about 8 p.m. tonight. All right, so people are asking about your forecasting and what it's like for you personally to go through all this. Do you go home and get some sleep or are you just kind of your mind keeps spinning and spinning? That's a great question. If I've learned, if I've learned one thing over 43 years here is that uh, I have to pace myself. There's no doubt about it, especially as a young meteorologist, it would get the adrenaline flowing and uh, so much so then by the time the hurricane would actually come, I would be totally exhausted, could barely speak. So I have learned to pace myself but uh, in this digital, to be honest with you, in this digital age where, where it is 24-7 and we're trying to make decisions both for you all, but then even as far as our company and the safety of our people in the building, it's um, decisions need to be made 24-7. So what I have found works for me, because I do happen to be someone who likes siestas, that is naps, that then through the period, uh, I'll just take some occasional, you know, one or, one or two hour naps and that seems to seems to work best for me and then, and then try to stay hydrated. You always stay energized, always. And any question we ask you whenever, you're always digging into the data, total concentration, and we appreciate that. Tornadoes, my gosh, there were a lot of tornado warnings. We don't have anything confirmed here, but Robert Spreader came back, our meteorologist said he had heard that there were maybe over 100 possible tornado warnings, not confirmed tornadoes, but speak to that and Milton. Okay, so, um, so just about with any hurricane, we do expect tornadoes, but with this particular one, it happened, or there were that many, not only because Milton was so intense, but also if you remember why Milton made the turn, remember we had the front that came through our area and the front basically stalled over central Florida. And, and we thought that Milton would be forced instead of going northeastward from Tampa to Jacksonville, kind of like Irma, that instead the front would cause it to turn right and go along I-4. And the main reason it did that is because of the front. Well, if a front is involved with the hurricane, that also means the jet stream is involved. Normally, with a hurricane, especially earlier in the summer, the fronts aren't anywhere near us, and so the jet stream isn't anywhere near us. But now what this means is the energy of the hurricane was combining with the energy of the jet stream and created that that amazing event I'm, I'm going to look back at the record books Jeannie um, but I, there's I'm, I'm thinking all the way back to Beulah 1967 in South Texas uh, there haven't you expect tornadoes but you don't expect uh, that many and, and, and that many large intense hurricanes that obviously produce some pretty tragic consequences well, when I got this morning, I looked out the window. We have a few branches here and there, but nothing compared to Helene. Our yard's not a mess like it was with Helene. So I know a lot of us are counting our blessings, and it's a beautiful place to be. And uh, hurricane season makes me nervous these days. When I first moved here, what, 1998? I didn't worry about hurricane season, but I do now. So we're all in this together. We appreciate all of your coverage, Tim, and we're going to have a lot more details, as you said, starting on First Coast News tonight at 5. Tim, anything else you want to say to wrap it up? Um, I would say thank you, everybody. We, real, we love your questions because it does help us as communicators, as forecasters to know um, what are you concerned about. It's one thing to be looking at numbers, but then for you to actually tell us. Uh, and then also, hopefully, everybody, um, of course, thinks about those who got it exponentially worse on the West Coast. Uh, but I think we're going to have a nice autumnal weekend, so hopefully yeah, everybody can just so. get some and, rest. And if you're like me, I mean, I, I got up where I have to keep checking myself because there's like this paint chip on, and I'm like, that's really bugging me. I'm like, Jeannie, mm. how can you possibly bother because yeah. you have a paint chip in your it's house? All relative. Some people don't yeah. even have homes, so it's a way for us to, like I say, count our blessings. But thanks, Tim. Thanks everybody for joining us. See you at five.